This plant behind me here is one of the UK's most effective and most problematic invasive plant species. This is Himalayan balsam and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So as I said, Himalayan balsam is an invasive plant species. It made its way here in about the 19th century from, you guessed it, the Himalayas. And it is an extremely effective invasive plant species. It outcompetes a lot of our local flora and spreads extremely quickly and extremely effectively and it causes serious issues with riverbank erosion as well. So why is it such a big problem? Well, it has very, very broad leaves and it grows quite tall and quite quickly as well. All of which means it will quite easily outcompete our ground flora for one of their competitive resources, sunlight. Looking up through a tree canopy here, you can see how much light is actually blocked out by broad leaves above. And that is effectively what's happening to every single plant trying to grow underneath the Himalayan balsam down here. And a lack of light obviously means a lack of the ability to photosynthesize and therefore a lack of ability to grow. All of our native flora under there that cannot grow properly and cannot photosynthesize properly will really struggle to get to seed. If a plant cannot get to seed, it cannot produce offspring. If it cannot produce offspring, it cannot continue to spread or replace the parent plants when they die off. And so instead, what happens is Himalayan balsam takes over vast swathes of land. Patches can become so dense that literally nothing grows underneath it. Because of how quick growing and fast spreading Himalayan balsam is, these patches get continuously bigger year on year on year. The seeds of Himalayan balsam can travel in lots of ways. It can often be picked up accidentally by hikers or by animals. But another one of the ways that it is transported is via water, which is why you will often see them starting like this. Look at this clump of it here. It's not a particularly big clump, it's not a particularly dense clump currently, but that clump there will undoubtedly spread a lot of the seed down along the riverbank. I mean, you can already see it's made its way into that island in the middle of the river there, and it's just there on the far side of the riverbank. Himalayan balsam has a bit of a secret weapon when it comes to spreading the seed. Unlike some plants that spread through animals picking up the seeds through eating it or on their fur, or seeds that spread through wind, Himalayan balsam actually pop seeds. Now, you definitely shouldn't go popping these seed pods, but for the purpose of this video, I will try and find one and show you this. So here is a perfect example of the balsam plant, and here is one of the seed pods. Now I've obviously done that at a very slow pace, a very controlled range, so it haven't popped and exploded very far, but those seeds can spread up to seven meters away from the parent plant when those seed pods pop. And to go with the way that they spread, Himalayan balsam seeds have a bit of a secret weapon. The seeds can hold up to seven years in the soil before they germinate. So effectively that means at a minimum you are going to need to control or attack the same area of balsam for at least seven years to be absolutely sure that that whole seed bank is gone. And that is assuming that none of the balsam that emerges within those seven years ever gets to seed and spreads to seed any further. Himalayan balsam will most typically follow waterways, at least during an initial spread. But more often than not, you will have riverbanks such as this one, just absolutely covered in Himalayan balsam. However, this is not the only environment it can grow in. I have seen it out in the middle of fields, I have seen it up hillsides, I have seen it next to paths, next to roads. However, there is nearly always one common factor as to why Himalayan balsam has got to a certain area, and that will be there will be a conduit to spread the seeds. It's the large patches of balsam along riverbanks, like you can see here, that lead to the issues with erosion and therefore water quality. That riverbank there would normally be held together by the roots of plants that are growing in there, such as, like on this side of the river, all these trees, all this other ground flora. Those roots will stabilize the soil and keep it held in place and stop it eroding into the river, which in turn benefits water quality. The more sediment that you have into a river, the lower that water quality can be, creating murkier waters, darker waters, and potentially filling the water with anything stored in the soil that might be negative, such as your agricultural runoff, other pollution, or even litter that humans have abandoned on the side of the rivers, which therefore is gonna to lead to your plastic pollution, gets into the bodies of the animals, etc., etc. 
However, Himalayan balsam is extremely shallow rooted. That's partly why it's so easy to pull out of the ground. But what that does mean is that the erosion force generated by the water will much more easily erode a riverbank that is not full of those properly deep rooted vegetation. It's very, very easy for riverbanks to erode when they've not got those strong root systems going through the middle of them. The shallow rooted nature of Himalayan balsam leaves a riverbank very susceptible to erosion and one of the biggest erosive powers we have in this country is rivers and waterways. As I'm sure you're all aware from your year nine geography classes, rivers hitting a bend will erode the bank. Eventually you're gonna get meanders, oxbow lakes, all of that. But when you've got a riverbank that is no longer protected by roots, by the plant systems that are growing on top of it, that erosion is going to speed up massively. So not only does Himalayan balsam impact all of our plant life, it also directly impacts our riverbanks. And that in turn directly impacts our rivers, which are already so damaged in this country. As I'm sure some of you may have heard, a lot of the rivers in this country are now basically classed as biologically dead. And so further impacts to water quality is obviously not going to be beneficial when we're already fighting a pretty uphill battle to try and restore the biodiversity within our rivers. It is an annoyingly beautiful flower as well with Himalayan balsam. Although the flower is so attractive and the plant is so beautiful, it is one of the most damaging invasive species we have here in the UK. And so understanding that this species has to be controlled and not necessarily promoted or marveled at is part of the reason that I wanted to make this video. And so as an ecologist, some of my work does revolve around the surveying, control and removal of this invasive species. So don't worry, it is not all doom and gloom. There are some solutions that we can do. Many of you I'm sure will recognize the name Himalayan balsam, potentially from a community group that you have in your area. I know there is definitely a couple around me that focus on removing this species as quickly as possible with a collective effort from an entire group. They're often also used in community days, team building days for work. And that is partly because it is so easy to do. There is some example just below my feet here of someone removing it in the past. So all of this is discarded Himalayan balsam root. And I am pleased to say whoever did this has done the correct job because they have cracked the balsam stem here. Himalayan balsam is extremely shallow rooted and very, very easy to pull out of the ground, which is partly what makes hand removal so effective. Here's some Himalayan balsam right here. Very gentle tug and it's out. So back to what I said about that other person, whoever's removed this previously, doing it effectively. The root ball of Himalayan balsam can quite easily reroot if just left like this. So what you need to do is snap these bits here at the lower end of the plant. And that is the most effective way to stop it rerouting and stop it growing again. There are multiple removal methods that I would recommend as an ecologist, one of which would be a concerted hand pulling effort as I've just shown you. It is so easy to remove because it is so shallow rooted. And then all you need to do is snap the plant down near the root ball to stop it rerouting again. And you have successfully removed some Himalayan balsam. If you have an extremely large uninterrupted swathe of Himalayan balsam, not too dissimilar to the one that we saw just down the river, that could be removed with scything or cutting. It's effectively the same as hand pulling, but instead of having to pull it out, you just cut them low down near that root ball. And again, that stops the plant regrowing. There are also some chemical treatments, but I personally would prefer to recommend hand pulling or cutting just to reduce the amount of chemical inputs that we're having into these environments, particularly with how close to rivers that Himalayan balsam is often found. A relatively short concerted effort on a patch of Himalayan balsam, very much like the one behind me, can effectively remove it. And at least for that year, if you get it out before the seed pods form, you stopped the further spread of the balsam. So let me know, have you ever seen Himalayan balsam in your local area? Is it taking over your nature reserves, your riverbanks as it is mine? And now that you know what it is and know how you can remove it, let me know if you're gonna get involved in any of your community groups or just take yourself out, take yourself a group of friends out and go do some good old fashioned balsam bashing. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you on the next one.